A rumored affair? An awkward love scene? A death threat? Gwyneth Paltrow's famous exes aren't afraid to speak their mind about their time with the star. When Gwyneth Paltrow was just a star on the rise, she started dating Robert Sean Leonard, who found fame as one of the young actors in the 1989 hit film Dead Poets Society. The two enjoyed a low-key but private relationship during the 90s. In 1998, Leonard opened up about the end of their romance to the New York Post, stating, "...it was the funniest breakup I've ever had." After calling time on their relationship, Paltrow quickly moved on to matchmaking. Leonard went on, "...within five minutes she was saying, "'You know who you'd like? I have this friend.'" Gwyneth's a bit of a yenta, but she's a great, great friend. Years later, he expressed empathy with how his ex dealt with the overwhelming forces of fame, something he admitted he couldn't do himself, telling Metro, "...I remember watching Gwyneth Paltrow deliver her Oscar acceptance speech in floods of tears. My god, how open. The poor girl was just so intimate with these unnamed millions of people." And when Ethan Hawke posted a throwback picture of all the Dead Poets Society cast on Instagram in 2022 to commemorate the film's anniversary, Paltrow joined in on the nostalgia, commenting, "...best movie ever. I wish I had made out with more of you than I did." Hawk replied, "...we all wish the same." I met the most beautiful girl I have ever seen in my entire life. Robert Sean Leonard wasn't the only promising young actor that Gwyneth Paltrow dated in the 90s. On Instagram in 2015, the star commemorated her relationship with Donovan Leach in a throwback pic from 1992, pointing out how long it had been since they were a young couple in Hollywood. Just two years earlier, people had speculated that the pair had been revisiting the past in a very real way, when photos of them kissing at a baseball game were published by tabloids. The timing didn't look good for Paltrow, who was married to Chris Martin at the time. The couple announced their separation six months after the pictures came out. However, following news of the couple's breakup, Leach spoke to the Daily Mail, where he clarified that they were just friends who had been platonic for decades. Leach told the tabloid, "...I was just saying goodbye to her. It was purely innocent. We were sitting in the owner's box in front of 30,000 people with her two children right next to us. That isn't exactly the setting for a secret liaison." He added that Paltrow had to cope with the non-stop intrusion of paparazzi wherever she went, saying, "...I consider her to be be one of my closest friends. We have tons of great friends in common." Gwyneth Paltrow and Brad Pitt dated from 1994 to 1997. As Pitt later reflected, he would have loved to marry into her family thanks to the connection he shared with her dad, Bruce, a director and producer. He told Goop, "...I felt that same kind of guidance that you would get from a coach or a mentor." It had to be Gwyneth. Pitt has also spoken about how he had to threaten Harvey Weinstein on Paltrow's behalf while they were dating. After Paltrow allegedly had a creepy hotel encounter with him in 1995, Pitt claimed he had promised to kill the producer if he kept making her uncomfortable, telling CNN, "...at that moment, I was just a boy from the Ozarks on the playground, and that's how we confronted things. I just wanted to make sure nothing was going to happen further because she was going to do two films with him." He leveraged his fame and power to protect me. But despite being one of Hollywood's most beloved A-list couples, Gwyneth Paltrow and Brad Pitt called off their upcoming wedding in 1997. In 2015, Paltrow admitted that the split was probably due to her young age. I was such a kid. I mean, I was 22 when we met. At the time of their separation, she was 24 and he was 33. Years later, the pair insisted that they still loved each other and had remained friends. However, as Paltrow admitted to Entertainment Tonight in 2022, it took a while for them to get there, and they certainly weren't pals in the years directly following the breakup. They reconnected around 2003 or 2004 and managed to stay in contact through the next two decades. Paltrow told Entertainment Tonight, "...I adore him. He's an amazing person and he's a great entrepreneur, and such a creative and such a good person." Pitt echoed the sentiment in an interview on Goo telling his former co-star that he loved her and adding, "...and it's lovely to have you as a friend now." After splitting from Brad Pitt, Gwyneth Paltrow found love on the set of her next movie, Shakespeare in Love which helped her snag an Academy Award as well as a boyfriend. At the time, Ben Affleck was an up-and-coming star who Paltrow encouraged to take more serious and challenging roles. To the outside world, Paltrow and the Boston native, who was known for his drinking and gambling, made an unlikely couple. And after years of dating on and off, the two finally called it quits. Affleck joked to the mirror after their breakup, "...the germ grass and meditation, that is not my thing. Gwyneth is much more evolved than I am. She is closer to inner peace, whereas I have a very difficult time sitting still." The end of their romantic relationship, however, did not mean the end of their professional one. After the breakup, they were cast as romantic leads in the movie Bounce. 
Affleck told The Mirror in 2001, Of course, I found the love scenes with Gwyneth awkward. Don't you think you would have found it awkward? Everybody's sorry. Despite the challenge, Affleck made it clear that he respected Paltrow's professionalism, saying, She's not a vindictive person, and she's not bitter or spiteful. She's just got enormous depth of spirit and soul. He also shared that he wanted to stay friends, and that he wasn't sure why the relationship ended, saying, It's just too complicated and too personal, and she'd kill me if I said any more. Paltrow later said that she wasn't surprised when Affleck and his next girlfriend Jennifer Lopez broke off their engagement. She told ABC News in 2003, Ben makes life tough for himself. He's got a lot of complication. He really is a great guy, so I hope he sorts himself out." Even celebrities like Chris Martin joke about dating their favorite Hollywood stars. The difference is that the musician actually managed to make it a reality in 2002 when he was performing in front of thousands at a Coldplay concert in Los Angeles. Paltrow told The Sun, "...an actress that he had a crush on was supposed to come to the concert. When she didn't show up, he was so annoyed that he said, "'Oh, this is for my girlfriend Gwyneth Paltrow.'" There was so much press about the quip that the pair ended up actually meeting for the first time at another concert. Paltrow explained that Martin's assistant came to her seat and said, "'This is so crazy, but will you come back and say hello afterward?' The famous pair quickly formed a connection during that fateful first meeting. They actually started dating and eventually married in December 2003, secretly tying the knot in a private Santa Barbara wedding. During an appearance on CBS Sunday Morning, Martin even compared their marriage to winning the lottery, commenting, "'From being a loser to going out with an Oscar winner? It's a giant leap.'" The Coldplay frontman also expressed his devotion through his music. He wrote the song Fix You for Paltrow while she was still mourning her father Bruce's untimely death from cancer in 2002. Chris Martin and Gwyneth Paltrow created a viral phrase when they announced their unorthodox separation through her group website. In a post titled, Consciously Uncoupling, the pair shared a statement that read, "...it is with hearts full of sadness that we have decided to separate." In a follow-up essay shared on Goop, Paltrow's editors elaborated on what the new age term actually meant, writing, "...divorce is a traumatic and difficult decision. However, when the whole concept of marriage and divorce is re-examined, there's actually something far more powerful and positive at play." My divorce and my relationship with Chris now is like better than our marriage was." The pair insisted that there were no villains in their relationship and that they would be focusing on growing spiritually for the sake of their children, writing, "...when we understand that both are actually partners in each other's spiritual progress, animosity dissolves much quicker." Luckily, um, my ex-husband is an incredibly good ex-husband. Despite their best intentions, the Coldplay frontman later admitted that he went through a period of depression for a year after the split. But the musician also discussed the importance of him and Paltrow staying in each other's lives for the sake of the kids. He told The Times in 2016, "...it's funny. I don't think about that word very often. Divorce. I see it as more like you meet someone, you have some time together, and things just move through." 